Hi everyone, welcome back to the Tech Supper channel. Today, in this video, we are going to show how do we create a Redwood based application in Oracle Visual Builder. So we are going to create a, a responsive application that would be suited for your Oracle Cloud applications based on the Redwood theme. So before I go further, guys, I will request everybody to subscribe to my channel and click on a bell icon to get regular updates. So let's begin. So what we are going to do, we are going to build a VB application based on the Redwood template. We will work with two important pattern to template. I mean, one is smart search page template with using which we can show the list of users and we can filter if needed. I will also show you how do we work with simple create and added page template. So let's begin and see how this can be achieved in Oracle Visual Builder. So let me go to the VB designer. And now we are going to create a new application and the application name I'm going to keep as a Redwood app. And there, if you want to create your application based on the Redwood template, you have to change the template and choose your Redwood starter application template here. Select and then finish. Now, when you do this, your application will be open and it will create a default application with name VB that would app and it will also create a page called main start, which will be a empty page based on some default uh, text. I'm not going to touch this page. We are going to create another page. So basically, if you see, if you would like to, so if you have created this application based on the Redwood template, you will see a various component that would come from the Redwood patterns like border, bottom draw template. You can see the template like simple. Okay, here it would not be visible, but yes, when you will create a new page, you will see there are so many templates that would be there by default. Create an empty page. We can see we have a simple create and added page template, welcome page template, smart search page template, and so on and so forth. So here, if you would like to know about those templates, you can also go to the components section here, and then you can search the template that you want to work upon. For example, I want to work with search, or let's say smart, search it will show you like smart filter search page template or this one this is already installed if the tag is installed meaning you can use the template and you can see the document how the how this template can be used you can see the apis you can see the uh, ux design also how it will work so you can use this document to read about this template so go back and let's start creating the page based on the template that we have. So first of all, I'm going to create a page here. And there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a page based on a smart search page template. Let's say, give a page name, let's say, list post, and then create. So here is the page which has been created based on that smart search page template. And you can see few of the things would come automatically. And this page is completely the responsive page. So here you can see when you select this, you can see the page title, page subtitle, some display mode is already set. You can see the go to parent. There are so many properties which is set and those properties or attributes are part of this template. For example, you would like to change the template at say list post. You can say show all, all the posts. And then you can see the display mode. This display mode is, is associated with one variable called display mode. You can remove that if you need it. And then you can see there are two modes, light and mixed. If you say mixed, this is how the mixed mode looks like. If you say the light, this is how the light mode look like. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list of 
post here and that list of post will come from an API called post. So I'm going to use that API to view the, to that post that we have. All right. So what I will do here, I'm going to create a service connection. First of all, defined by endpoint, I'll take this API, put it here, get many next. Let's say JSON backend, for example, next. Next, here I'm going to give a service name JSON and pause and let's say simply create. Fine, so you can see the one endpoint has been added and now I want to show all those posts on my page, on this page or not this page, basically list post. So here, if you go to the structure, there's a container template. There's a list view already added in the container template. What I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this list view and I'm going to add my own view. Let's not remove the dependencies. Delete. Right. So you can see we have a collection slot available inside that page template. And here you can see we have so many other options that we can use. You can see we can have an add option here. We can have a delete option here. We can have manage column options here. We can have a record selector options here. We can see the export options. So these are the default options. And then you can also generate event of all the, all the buttons also by default, add, delete, primary action, secondary action, export. So you have all the events as well, right? Go to the general and let's make it off for now. All right, now what I will do, first of all, I'm going to add a list here, list view. And there I'm going to use the quick start and click on add data. On this add data, I'm going to choose my endpoint, select template. I will choose this template next. And then overline text, let's say title. Then I will go to the second one. Then I will say, all right, online text, let's say body, not body, let's say primary text, let's say user ID. And then body also. And next I'm going to show as a ID for now, right? Let's select next and then finish. So here it will show the post that you have in this format. All right, cool. So now my list is ready. Now you can see the list of data here. Cool, so my first page is ready. Now, what I want, I want to create a new page which will post, which will create a new post. So for which I'm going to add a new endpoint, JSON. Go to the endpoint and click on a plus. And this time I will say create post. Create again, it will be post. And then I'm going to take this as a sample body. Uh, request body that is okay. And then save as example response. And let this say. Save. Cool. The second endpoint has been added. Now, what I will do, I will create another page here. Create page. And that page will be based on simple create and added page template. Let's say create post. And then say create. Fine. Cool. This has been added here. And you can also see here this template, the page has been created based on this simple create and edit page template. And you can see we have a cancel button, submit button. If you go to the properties, you can see various properties of this template. Page title, new post. Let's say add insert post details. All right, you can see submit and cancel button are already there. You can see show to go, go to parent page. So if you remove this, this is associated with one of the variable. If you remove this, you will see the parent page is visible here. 
All right. We can control Z. All right. Or you can say, go to parent page. Because this go to parent option is one of the variable which is created already, which has the property set to default. That is the reason this is not visible here. You can see here display mode. I will remove the display mode and will say mixed mode. The same mode that I have used in my previous page also, right? Cool. Now here, what I want, great. What I need here, I want to add the data. I will go to the JSON and will create a form. So, but here you can see there's a form which is which is already added, which is dynamic form. I will delete that. I will not delete the dependencies, delete. And then you can see this slot is available for you. And then I'm going to create a form here. I want to add everything here and then finish. All right. So I can go to the properties of the form layout and we'll say two. You don't need to add the submit and cancel button, which is already there. And this cancel button will take you to the previous page and submit button actually will allow you to submit the data. All right. So go to the properties. And if you go select this template, go to the event and you will see there are so many events, which is already created for us like SP cancel chain. Meaning when you click on a cancel chain, what is what it is going to do? It is going to that it is going to take it to the previous page. Submit, you can see save action chain. No, submit action chain is already created for you. When you click here, you will see it is calling uh, another chain SP save chain. And after this chain is being called, it will navigate you to the previous page also. So let me go there and let's see submit form data, go to this chain. And there you can see we have so many things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove that else, which I don't need it. And form state, I'm not going to use. I'm going to say truth for now. And then you can say it is calling another action chain. So what I can do, I can simply remove that and then call rest here. And then here, I'm going to call my post endpoint select and then there I can add the body which is my post and save all right after that I'm going to say fire notification and let's remove this condition and let's say new post added successfully and let's say this is a this is as a confirmation type. All right. So I can remove that written so that the next code can be executed. Fine. Let's go back to the page designer. Here we go. So you can control so many other properties like you can add more actions if you want, like uh, let's say add it. So you can keep adding more and more buttons here, right? Okay, let's, this is okay, fine. Now let's go back to the list post, how I will come to this page. So you can go to the list page and there you will see, go to the design, go to the properties. So you select this template, there you will see a primary action label. You can say add. So this add button will be added which will take you to the this page, but you have to click on this and you can see new event listener and let's say add event for the primary action. And there you can see navigate to the list post. So this is how you can do this, right? So now let me change the default page to my list post and let's say run. So when you will run this application, you will see this page is there and it has added the search functionality already, but we don't have the search for now. Let's forget about it. And if you see this page is 
responsive by default, you will see it will adjust. And you click on the add button. It will take you to the, what happened? Okay, I guess it is not done. Primary action, where we had this. Oh, something has been added here. What happened? Oh, okay. So it says we need to add some applied filter set. It's a mandatory. Let's say blank for now. All right. Let me check if I can go back. All right. Problem is I have selected the list code. I need to select the create post. I have selected the same list post page, which is not correct. Let me run this now. Add. Here we go. And you can cancel this button. You can see you're on the back. Add. Let's say test body. One, two, three. Title three. And then let's say submit. So it will submit new post added successfully and you're back on the previous page. So guys, this is how you can use the Redwood template to create a nice Redwood application. Guys, I hope you find this video useful. If yes, please like, comment and share and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on a bell icon. You can follow me over LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.